Okay, it is now 7 o'clock and we'll start the meeting. First order of business is a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Chairman, at uh, this time I would like to point out that we have a new cover sheet for item H2 referencing the naming of a road off of Catlett Mountain Road. Uh, the new road name is Pointers Way. Very good. Is that change? Is there a motion to adopt the agenda? Chairman, I make a motion to adopt the agenda with the addition. Second. Any second? Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Next item we have is public presentations. During the public presentation, comment period, speakers wish to address the board, shall so clearly state their names and address. Speakers shall limit their remarks to three minutes and may not yield any unused portion of their speaking time to others. Each speaker shall be limited to one appearance at each regular meeting of the board. Having said that, we have several public hearings this evening. So the public hearings will be the opportunity to speak on that. The public presentations <coughs> will be the opportunity to speak on anything other than public hearing tonight. Is there anybody that would care to come forward, Ms. Mouse? Yes, sir, Ms. Christy <coughs> Apple. Hi, um, my name is Christy Sowers Atwood. My address is 1255 Pilgrim's Way in Bentonville, Virginia. On March 16, 2015, my family's life changed forever. Our home burned to the ground in front of our eyes, and we lost two of our precious four legged family members. All of our family pictures and mementos, heirlooms passed through generations, all of my dad's police badges, and my granddaddy's army gear all wiped away in 20 minutes. My children, Victor and I, survived that nightmare, not unscathed, but we had each other. After you experience a tragedy, there are people coming at you from all directions, and it is a very confusing and overwhelming time. You have the insurance pushing you to get your claim processed. You have good-hearted friends and neighbors, and even the kindest strangers lending a hand. Then you have those that like to take advantage of your situation, predators that lay in wait until your defenses are diminished. At this point, this is where every citizen should be able to rely on their local government, its officials, and the laws that are written and instituted for protection, common benefit, and security of the people. Unfortunately, the Warren County building official did not follow the laws of Virginia or the Uniform Building Code. He ignored the fact that the applicant to build my home was an unlicensed entity, and then the official granted them a permit. I did not know they were unlicensed. They were advertised as such. By him granting that permit, that is a class three misdemeanor. After he unlawfully transferred the permit to the name of a licensed entity, he and his inspectors then overlooked or ignored large defects uh, um, during the build of my home. Some, some of these defects have been brought to light in the recent Board of Appeals hearing, um, and these defects have been easy, they could have easily caused another fire, and maybe this time we would not have been as lucky. The building official still denies blame, and he stated on a recording, the findings of the appeals board is illegal. However, I did receive a copy of a new notice of violation that was dated June the 13th, um, but he states on here that um, the local board felt that this was a code violation that it needed to be corrected. However, one item that he vehemently denied in the very first hearing, which was my LP smart side siding, the installation of that, um, he now says is a true violation. There are more, more than just those at my house. Board of Supervisors, it is time to clean the house. I demand that you take action and hold David Bean, his department, and any Warren County government employee or official aiding in this travesty accountable. I have over $150,000 worth of items incorrect or faulty with my home. And since I decided to fight because I had no other choice, I have put out over $30,000 for inspections, legal fees, and needed resources. 
This situation should have never occurred. The county government, by the Virginia Bill of Rights, should have protected my family. Mr. Beeman has been grossly negligent with my home and situation. Where? Thank you. Oh, go ahead. Wrap it up. Okay. Where else has there been negligence? Who inspected the power plant and what was missed there? Are we sitting on a time bomb? Um, a board, of, uh, just real short here, a board of appeals member said that they did not have the power to discipline Mr. Bean. But board of supervisors, you do. There are lots of fat cats who get nice, cushy government jobs, drive government issued vehicles, and just while away the days until retirement. It is time to take a hard look at all these officials. Is everyone doing their job to serve and protect the community? If not, it is time to chase the cats out of the house. My family and the citizens of Warren County, your neighbors, your family, your voters deserve so much better, and they are owed this under the Constitution of Virginia. I demand a course of action be planned and put into action by July 1, 2018 to rectify the internal issues of the building department with an investigation and persons to be held accountable. I also demand a course of action be put into place to directly address the gross negligence the Warren County Building Department and its building official committed on the build of my home. No one should have to suffer the trials that my family has endured and we are still enduring. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? No one else. Anybody else care to come forward? Second call. Third and final call. And one item, too, and I people coming in and I'm sure uh, people have already been here. We do have sign-up sheets for the, uh, the different public hearings, so if you want to sign up, if you want to sign up for all of them, go ahead. So, okay, next item, reports to board members, the county administrator and county attorney, Mr. Sayer. Thank you, Chairman Carter. On Monday, June 11, 2018, I attended a flag ceremony recognizing Joseph Warren, who is the person that Warren County is named after. And Mr. Stanley mentioned at the flag ceremony, apparently there's about 14 other counties named after Mr. Warren. But he has an illustrious career. Check out his background. On Wednesday, June 13, 2018, there was a ribbon cutting at the Front Royal, Royal Premier Copies on Fairground Road, and it was a very nice event. and. Uh, I liked how they had their pastor from Rockland Road area come in and said a prayer for the business. It was very nice. Um, I attended the visitation of Michael Ryan and Ramey. It was very sad. His passing uh, was on, uh, the visitation was on the funeral was on Saturday, June 16, 2018. And the fire department and the front row police and the sheriff's department came out. It was really nice. Um, lastly, I just I want to thank the Front Royal Police Department. They've been doing a very good job. I was glad to see everybody's doing their job. And I'd like to just give a quote what Abraham Lincoln said. He said, no man is smart enough to lie. And he said, the reason why is because when you lie, you got to back up that lie with another lie and you forget. You forget what you lied about. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, Mr. Fox. Nothing else, Chairman. Um, several things. I uh, and several of our other members attended the uh, ribbon cutting at the Bushel Club, which is located at the Apple House, very nice facility. And I also attended the uh, Premier Copies, uh, new business out on Fairgrounds Road. And just as a reminder, Mr. Stanley made, made touch base, and I think we only have one meeting in July, and that is, uh, I think, what is that date? That would be 17. 17th. Yeah, okay. So I just want to make that a reminder too. So. Um, and also, I guess, in reference to the stories that have been going around with the uh, issues of the EDA, I was contacted by one of the reporters. And uh, she did print my quote correctly, but then she emailed me at 11 p.m. Friday night. And when I response by 9 a.m., I didn't get a chance to respond to that. But um, she was asking about a couple of things, actually. Uh, first off, was she referenced a letter that the EEA sent to the town PD 
that we had nothing to do with. We had nothing to do with uh, shutting down the investigation. And that letter was actually from the EDA, and it was requested a copy of that by Mr. Uh, Fox and Mr. Sayer, that we received a copy of that. But that was the only knowledge we had uh, of those actions, and we didn't have anything to do with that. Um, the other question she had was, let's see. I'm sorry, uh, this is a quick call. Um, she stated or asked uh, that, that we, well, we may not feel that we have any authority, but we ultimately decide if the person in question remains the county employee. And I'd like to clear that up right now. Uh, she is not a county employee. Is that not correct, Mr. Whitten? Uh, that's correct, Mr. Chairman. She's an employee of the EDA board. And they have sole control over hiring and firing of their employees. That's right. They have a contract with Mr. Donald. So we had nothing to do with that. And then uh, the other thing that was put in there, too, was how the board acts ultimately dictates whether the members will be elected to serve an additional term. I don't think that's anybody's concern on this board. The actions we take, whether or not we get reelected. So I just want to make that clear, Mr. Murray. Uh, yes, I also attended the flag ceremony, the Apple House, Blue Reed, ribbon cutting, and premier copiers, like many of us. But I want to touch on a subject for a minute. I'd like to thank Ribbon United Methodist Church for opening its doors in a time of sorrow and crisis. There wasn't a seat available in that church that holds 400 plus. And I want to thank our police, fire, rescue, and sheriff's officers for the fabulous turnout and the presentation of the flag at the top of the road. It's a hard time for the family. And what I'd like to do is ask everyone in your own way tonight, say a prayer for my mom because there's a volunteer fireman looking down over his mom and dad and pray for his mom and dad because this is a hard thing to have happen. And for those who know Stevie Foster and anybody involved with a charity or a fundraiser, we all know Stevie. He had a heart attack today, 70 feet up, painting a roof. So also please remember him. Thank you. Very good. Ms. Gladys? Well, I attended the Apple House Ribbon Party, too. With, along with others, and today was my community policy management team meeting, and there's really nothing to report from that. Thank you. Mr. Stanley. Mr. Chair, members of the board, um, my written report, uh, the county has recently contracted with a consultant to conduct a visioning process to kick off the update of the county's comprehensive plan. The plan was last approved by the board July 16, 2013. It's the current county comp plan. The county is required to begin the update of the plan, at least review it, every five years. The update will begin this July with a citizen survey. The survey will be available on the county's website, and hard copies will be provided to the Governor's Center or may be mailed if requested. The survey will address various topics such as land use, education, housing, county services, parks and recreation, transportation, taxes, and other items. The plan provides the framework for how the community wishes to develop over the next 15 to 20 years. The survey is an excellent opportunity for citizens to come involved in the update of the plan, which is the county's official guide for future development related decisions. Talking about development, our development review committee met on May 23rd. We may discuss projects in the county, including a proposed contractor storage yard on Winters Court off of Fairground Road behind the RSW Regional Jail, proposed alterations to the Starbucks at Urban Common Shopping Center, and a request for an RV sales business. The committee also discussed projects in town, including a proposed brewery on Water Street in the old Lockhart building, a proposed shoe store that will be opening on Main Street next to Town Hall, an update on inspections at the Front Royal Brewery, which is now open, and parking and possible uses for Busy B store on Jackson Street. We'll meet, we'll meet again uh, on June 27th. For our sanitary districts, uh, spring break operations have been completed for the Shendo Farms, Lakefront Royal, and Linden Heights sanitary districts. 
Also, Mr. Chomos let me know this evening that uh, mowing operations in Chandler Farms have been completed and they hope to pick up Linden Heights tomorrow. Uh, Wildcat Drive Sanitary District, uh, the board at its last meeting appointed a three member advisory board. Uh, the initial meeting to discuss budget and tax rates for that board will be set up. We're looking at July 2nd, 10 a.m. for that meeting. On the agenda uh, for our VDOT Smart Scale applications, uh, FY 2019 represents the second uh, biennial uh, application process for the Smart Scale uh, projects. Uh, that's the Virginia Department of Transportation's new funding formula where projects get submitted, ranked, and scored and will compete against other projects in the region and in the state for funding. The county can submit up to four projects for consideration. Uh, staff has worked with VDOT to identify four projects based on safety, need, community impact, and cost, and projects that we feel we have a chance of success. Uh, those projects include uh, Route 55 East Corridor safety improvements, including rumble strips, on the edge of pavement, raised pavement markers, doorbell upgrades, signage upgrades, electronic speed message signage, roadside lighting, and fixed object hazard removal along the three-mile corridor between town corporate limits and Route 79 in London. Second project is uh, to extend the existing Route 345-22 southbound ramp on the I-66 up to the Crooked Run Boulevard to address capacity, weaving, and safety issues that would tie in with the project that's currently going on out there. Also a project uh, for Route 345-22 North to install roadway lighting along a 1.6 mile segment of the corridor from the town corporate limits all the way up to Diamond Ridge Drive intersection to address nighttime visibility and safety issues. As everyone knows, we had a fatality uh, there this year. And the fourth project is to uh, eliminate an existing double track at grade Norfolk Southern Railway crossing adjacent to the Virginia Port by constructing a new bridge overpass over Rockland Road. In addition to the four projects, the Northern Shenandoah Valley Regional Commission will be spending two projects for the county, one to improve the Route 7955 intersection in London and to expand the London parking lot. Project updates, uh, Rusty Jeffries Elementary School, uh, LCW, has completed the project punch list and we hope to be able to wrap up the project and pay all invoices this month. County staff has substantially completed site work and installation of phases one and two of the playground equipment the public school system is looking to do a formal ribbon cutting for all the improvements this August. Health and Human Services Complex at Juniper Construction uh, is working to renovate the Registrar's Office and the Brighter Futures Alternative School Program. Contract began work for June the 4th, and we hope to have the school portion complete by September 1st. And the Registrar's area by November 1st. A site plan for some minor parking improvements has been submitted to the town the past week. Uh, Shangri-La Revenue Sharing Project, that's a project that county staff is managing to replace uh, the bridge crossing there with a box culvert. Uh, we're hoping to be able to mobilize the contract on July 2nd to be able to start that project. Uh, last project I want to mention uh, was the VDOT Morgan 4 Bridge. The bridge and roadway opened in traffic on January 22nd. Uh, it was substantially completed by the June 1st uh, deadline for the contract with VDOT. However, that storm of June 1st to 3rd caused uh, significant damage to the, um, particularly to the southern approach. Uh, VDOT's in the process, they were out there today making necessary repairs. It looks like our ribbon cutting, cutting will be pushed out probably to early August. Uh, and with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions before we have. You may have any questions for Mr. Stanley? Uh, I was just going to mention that. Uh, I sent, I got a constituent up on Friesland Road, as mentioned to me again. He had mentioned about the road needing restriping, repainting. There were some, a few issues there. And I think he would help me send a letter. I think it was Ed Carter. And uh, we just need to redo that. And yeah, you can send me the specific location and issue that we Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Whitten? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I handed out my report. The one thing to highlight is Thursday we do have a hearing at Circuit Court to ask the court to remove the requirement of having a golf course, golf course at the front of a golf club. Basically, this was a requirement when the um, property was deeded back in the 30s, when it was donated back in the 30s. Um, but since that time, there's so many golf courses that there's really not a need for it. 
And so we would be turning over the property to general recreational purposes, including trails and boat landing and fields. Um, I'd be happy to answer any other questions. Any other questions for Mr. Whitney at this time? Okay. Next item we have is approval of minutes, the regular meeting of June 5th, 2018. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the minutes for the regular meeting of June 5th, 2018, as presented. Second. Is there any other comments on that? Hearing none, those in favor, please say aye. 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 Next, we have the additional appropriations and transfers. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the additional appropriations and transfers as presented. Second. We move and second. Is there any other comments? Hearing none, those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed. Next, we have the approval of accounts. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the accounts as presented. Second. We move and second it. Is there any comments on this? I was just going to mention there looks like the uh, Warren County Winkman tax collections is still going, going strong and it looks like it's going well. Yes, very good. No other comments? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion Next item we have is the consent agenda. Is there any item on the consent agenda that needs to be pulled? I'd like to pull item number 10 if you want to Sure. Item 10 has been uh, uh, pulled out for additional discussion. Um, I, was, oh, I had a question about number one. I just couldn't figure out like, what, who the VPI teacher is for 70 some thousand. I, don't know. I could, I think I can answer that question. It's more than one position, Mr. Sayer. I don't know exactly how many positions, but um, they use that funding they get from the state to fill the different slots. Um, it's not, I mean, I did confirm it's not one position. That didn't answer. Now, the only other thing, I just, the resolution of support number 15, don't really need to pull it, but that's a, really hope that will happen. That'd be a wonderful thing. Okay, is there a uh, motion to adopt the consent agenda with uh, the exception of item 10? I'm just going to adopt the exception of 10. Second. Can we move and second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Item number 10, Mr. Whitman. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the county's contract with Simmer and Carter Insurance Agency is set to expire June 30th. Pursuant to the contract, Simmer and Carter provides property and casualty insurance for the following fire companies from Royal Rivermont, South Warren, Linden, Shando Shores, Sportsmith, and North Warren. Um, the contract contains a renewal option for two additional one year terms. And pursuant to the renewal option, the proposed amendment would extend the contract for an additional one year term. Uh, Fire and Rescue has been happy with the services they received and they're recommending renewal. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions at this time? I'm, I like to go last, but if, if no else, um, Mr. Uh, Whitten, was this initially placed out to bid? Uh, that's correct. It was placed out to bid. Uh, <coughs> Back in 2015, we put it out to bid, and at that point, um, we received, I believe, two bids, and um, Mr. Carter does work for Simmer Carter, but he did not participate in preparing the bid. Someone else would, that, uh, that works for Simmer Carter uh, participated in putting the bid package together, so that satisfies any conflict of interest concerns. And it was a contract that was um, needed and procured before Mr. Carter came on the board, so there's no conflict of interest concerns because of that. Any other, other questions? <coughs> no other questions? All right. I've got a statement to read, and I'll turn this over to Mr. Martin. <coughs> on item H10 of tonight's agenda, the extension of contract for services with Summer and Carter Insurance, I'd like to disclose the following. I am an officer or employee with a personal interest in a transaction as defined by the Virginia State Code Section 2.2-3112A as amended pursuant to Virginia State Code Section 2.2-3115F as amended. I am disclosing that although I am an employee of Summer Department Insurance Agency located at 11 Water Street, Farmville, Virginia 22630, 
I was not involved in negotiating the extension of the contract for property and casualty insurance coverage for Warren County Department of Fire and Rescue Services. However, the transaction has an application solely to property or a business or governmental agency in which I have a personal interest. Accordingly, I must disqualify myself from participating in this matter before the Board of Supervisors. I ask that this disclosure be made part of the minutes of this meeting. And I also just wanted to add some history to the statement I just read. Summer and Carter wrote its first fire department in 1989, and over time we have written nearly all the fire departments on an individual basis. When the county put out a request for a proposal for a countywide policy, Summer and Carter put in a bid through Volunteer Fireman's Insurance Services, which was the low bid, and I complied with all the requirements. Over time, I've made decisions as an elected official that caused several fire departments to leave our agency and go elsewhere. I've always made my decisions on the board based on what was best for the community, not what was best for me personally, and I will continue to do this. In addition, I periodically sought the Commonwealth's attorney's opinion as to if my situation constitutes a conflict of interest. I have a recent opinion that says it does not. I bring this up now because last year, one of the local reporters had a FOIA request for all information pertaining to Stone Runner Carter's business with the County of Warren. And as of this time, they, they may actually come up with another uh, story this time. So I'm not uh, uh, mention the person's name, but I expect them to do that again. So this is my response in anticipation of the story. Mr. Murray? Is there any discussion? Is there a motion on the floor yet? Mm -hmm. yeah. You probably have to have a motion for it. You have to have a motion. Yeah. Somebody is there. Somebody make a motion. You want me to make a motion? Uh, I'll see here. I move that the Board of Supervisors authorize the County Administrator to execute the amendment to contract with Stone Burner Carter Insurance Agency in accordance with the renewal option of contract to extend the contract for a one year term of July 1st. 2018 to June 30th, 2019. Second. Is there any discussion? Yes, most of my concerns have been addressed, uh, but I think there is some parents of uh, association with some kind of card as long as they might be perceived at the front of the business. So I do not support this motion. Yes. We're going to do a roll call. Mr. Sagan? Oh, oh, <laughs> it's my understanding, I mean, I've talked to a lot of the, the fire departments in Warren County, and uh, it, there aren't many uh, insurance companies that insure that kind of uh, that fire department. So I will support the motion. Mr. Sagan? Aye. Uh, Mr. Fox? No. Mr. Chairman? Aye. Mr. Murray? Uh, Ms. Glavis? Aye. 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 This condition use permit 2018-04-01 Bill G. Al Jr. and Patricia L. Dow for short-term tourist rental. Mr. Winner. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the Board of Supervisors. Uh, this property is located at 1207 Crawford Mill Road in Middletown. It's identified on tax map 3. It's parcel 18B. Uh, the applicants uh, requested this short-term tourist rental about three months ago, and in that time, they had their property up for sale. They did not have uh, any idea that it would sell within that time period where they uh, fully intended to operate it as a short-term tourist rental if approved. Uh, the property was sold and transferred ownership on June 8, 2018, and the new owners, John Stillwell and Helen Park, have requested that the process continue and their names be placed on the permit if the Board of Supervisors choose to approve the request for a short-term tourist rental. Uh, this property is uh, 
One, the Virginia Department of Historic Resources Inventory of Historic Landmarks in the County. It dates back to 1810 to 1840 and is known as the Headley House. Uh, it does meet the setback requirements for short-term tourist rentals as the closest dwelling is 311 feet uh, away. The property is not located in an area that has a property owners or homeowners association and uh, it's been approved for a three bedroom septic. The planning commission moved this forward with the following conditions. Number one, the applicant shall comply with all Warren County Health Department and Warren County Building Inspections and Virginia Statewide Fire Prevention Code regulations and requirements. Number two, the maximum number of occupants shall not exceed six is determined according to the Health Department conditional permit for the three bedroom dwelling. Number three, the applicant shall have the well water tested annually for E. coli and coliform bacteria and company results shall be submitted to the planning and health departments. Number four, the applicant shall have the septic system inspected annually by a state licensed inspector and a copy of the results in their report shall be submitted to the planning and health departments. The system also should be serviced every three to five years as recommended by the health department. Number five, the property shall be in compliance with section 18056.4 of the Warren County Zoning Ordinance regarding supplemental regulations for short-term tourist rentals, which includes a property management plan to be submitted to the planning department prior to staff issuing a certificate of zoning for this use. And number six, the applicant shall register with the Commissioner of Revenue's Office for transient lodging tax purposes. This public hearing has been properly advertised. Adjacent property owners are notified. Both Mr. and Mrs. Dow are here, uh, and also Mr. Stillwell and Ms. Parker are here. If you have any questions, and I'd be happy to answer any. Do you have any questions for Mr. Willing? Yes, if I may. Mr. Willing, are there any pets going to be allowed there? And how many? Uh, I, I do not know that. Um, that has not been something that came up in the previous short-term tourist rentals, but um, maybe the new property owners could possibly answer that. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't know. And I asked a question of uh, Mr. Murray, what, what, where exactly are you going with this? Well, we have limits on how many dogs or animals we can have on property. Somebody coming in, we could be bringing in four dogs, five dogs while they're traveling, which is greater than we're allowed. And this is something we should be looking at when we do the short-term tourist rentals. We have to treat those renting no different than our own. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, no, I just... And I didn't even have any problems with the video. I just saw her camera being in motion or something. But I wasn't sure what that was. Okay, uh, would the applicants here to address that concern or, or any others? I'm Helen Park. That's my husband, John Stella. Um, we've been working really closely um, and especially with the Dallas to ensure that everything goes smoothly. No, that's okay. Smoothly, um, with the licensing process. Um, regarding the pets, we're more than happy to oblige whatever the board believes is best for the community. Um, we do have one dog, she's a very sweet little puppy, so we're more than happy to welcome guests with service dog needs um, for small dogs within a certain weight limit or size limit. Um, if you believe that we do need a limit, we're more than happy to. What is, that? what is the uh, limit? Well, by by right limit is four dogs by right for a property owner, uh, six months or older. Okay, so that's your by right limit. Okay. We would we would plan to keep it under that and uh, on all our uh, advertisements and anything for the property. A concern I have is somebody brings in three or four dogs. And they use your septic system to get rid of the waste. That's not acceptable. Right. Right. That can destroy your system. Yeah. So that's where my concern is. Okay. Thank you. That's something I think. 
information. <laughs> you can take a look at it. No, I'm sorry, I didn't get your address. Uh, 1207 Cawthorn Mill Road. It's uh, Middletown, Virginia, 22645. Thank you. Well, we'll address uh, that issue in the future. Any other questions for staff? We'll now open up the public hearing. Uh, again, that means pretty much just three minutes. Uh, public hearing is now open. Ms. Nelson, is there anyone that signed up? No, sir. Is there anyone that would care to address this issue? Second call. Third and final opportunity. Public hearing is closed. What's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I move the Board of Supervisors approve the conditional use permit request of John Stillwell and Helen Park for a short term tourist round with the conditions as recommended by the Planning Commission and State. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have the London Heights Sanitary District proposed this year, 2018 2019 approval plan. Mr. Berry. Good evening, Chairman Carter, members of the board. On October 31st, 2017, through mutual agreement with the London Heights Homeowners Association, the County of Warren assumed maintenance responsibilities for the two and a half mile road system within the London Heights Sanitary District. Soon afterward, the County initiated communications with the London Heights HOA board about development of the Capital Improvement Plan, or CIP. County Public Works staff reviewed the road system, located current drainage pipes, obtained feedback from the HOA concerning the community needs, and developed the CIP. The CIP will serve as a roadmap for the future to maintain focus on where improvements should be made and to ensure the limited Linden Heights Sanitary District funds are spent as wisely as possible. The CIP was developed while considering the public's input, traffic patterns accounts, the history of and the ongoing problem maintenance areas, and the desires and directions of the Linden Heights HOA Board. In developing the CIP, we kept a few simple goals in mind. Number one, address any safety issue and or hazards as soon as possible. Number two, try to leverage as much funding, primarily through VDOT's revenue sharing program as possible, to upgrade roadways in order to turn them over to the state for maintenance. This should ultimately reduce the roadway mileage that we maintain and thus impacts to the Linden Heights Sanitary District maintenance budget. Number three, attempt to focus the permits on the higher volume roadways and more densely populated areas so as many residents as possible will see benefits. And number four, address ongoing maintenance problem areas where routine maintenance replacement efforts simply do not address these issues. In order to, in order to assist us in the achievement of these goals, we've established a long-term focused approach to upgrading roadways to turn over to VDOT. This includes a prioritized network of some of the most heavily traveled roadways in the district with ongoing maintenance issues, and we want to focus on the ones that will benefit the most residents. Having this in place today gives us something to, to work for for years to come and look for a better future for those residents in the district. This is the first Linden Heights Sanitary District CIP, but the CIP will typically be reviewed or updated annually to ensure it is current and meets the needs of the Linden Heights community. We have utilized the Linden Heights HOA Board as an advisory group throughout the development and revision process, and on May 31st, 2018, we met with the Linden Heights HOA Board to finalize the list of potential priority CIP projects. A copy of the proposed fiscal year 2018-19 Linden Heights Sanitary District CIP is included in your packet. It contains a total of nine projects with a total estimated cost of $1,130,300. There are four proposed rural addition projects which will be jointly funded through VDOT's revenue sharing program at 50%, the county 25%, and sanitary district budget at 25%. The five other internal projects will be funded through the sanitary district budgets and other sources. The CIP as presented is not fully funded. However, we currently have $10,000 received from the Linden Heights HOA set aside in reserves to be applied to the future Blue Valley Road Capital Improvement Project. I will briefly review the projects in the priority order as they appear in the draft CIP. Number one is intersection control signage and roadway warning signage throughout the district. Number two will be a rural addition project that will be Blue Valley Road Phase 1 
0.11 miles in length. Number three will be ridge top lane development, engineering construction of a cult set or turnaround, and that'll be specifically at the ridge top lane um, uh, cult set at the north end. Our, our fourth project will be the T Court Guardrail. This is a project that the HOA specifically asked us about, an internal project, and that is at the end of uh, Blue Valley Road where it intersects at T Court. Our fifth project. Rural addition project is Old Linden Road, 0.76 miles, um, and it goes from the intersection of Route 731 to the east end. Um, and that is uh, also ranked number 23 on the county's rural addition priority list. <coughs> number six, T Court cul de sac and turnaround. Again, another construction design of a cul de sac. Um, and one thing that the HOAS is that we make a notation drainage will be addressed at this location. Number seven will be Blue Valley Road Phase Two, Road Addition Project, 0.19 miles, and that goes from the top of the paved hill there um, in the Parkside area. And then Parkside Road Phase One will be number eight, Road Addition Project, 0.08 miles. It goes basically from Blue Valley Road to Longview Road. And our last project, number nine, um, is another project bought forth from the HOA, Blue Valley Road Drainage Project. It's just an extension of existing pavement throughout the intersection of T Court. The public hearing was properly advertised and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have about the <coughs> draft CIP. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Gary at this time? So let's see, the total cost of all the projects was like 1.13 million. And 25% of that would come from the sanitary district budget, so roughly three well, hundred thousand. The, the actual 25% plus to the RAP project, the rural right. projects, they're the um, three hundred thirty-seven thousand three hundred twenty-five dollars will be their share of the rural addition projects. Okay. Um, the, the other projects, the fifty-one thousand, would be all funded by the sanitary district. Okay. So ten thousand years it should have been in thirty-seven years. No, I mean, I think it's great that you have know, a plan that you can't have. Um, and then the, the, the hardest part of that is figuring out how to fund it and all. So, I appreciate that. Any other questions? Hearing none, we now open the public hearing. Same rules apply. Ms. Mills, did anybody sign up? No, sir. Is there anybody from the audience that's here to come and comment on that? Second chance. Third and final. Public hearing is closed. Gentlemen and ladies, what's your question? Mr. Chairman, I move the Board of Supervisors approve the proposed fiscal year 2018-19 Lincoln Heights Sanitary District Capital Improvement Plan as presented. Second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Next item we have is public hearing number three. And that's the lease of the Senior Center of the Chandler Area Agency on Aging. Mr. Whitman. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. The Chandler Area Agency on Aging is a leasing the county owned building located at 1217 Commonwealth Avenue, known as the Senior Center since May 2001. The current five year lease had an expiration date of September 30, 2017. Our office recently was made aware of the lease had expired, and SAAA was notified and would like to continue leasing the building for use as a senior center. The proposed lease will be a five year term beginning retroactively on October 1st, 2017 and continuing through September 30th, 2022. Um, no rent would be charged during such time. Uh, the terms and conditions of the new proposed lease are similar to the existing, with one exception that the improvements are made to the Health and Human Services Complex to accommodate SAAA before the termination date the county has the option of moving SAAA to the Health and Human Services Complex. The public hearing has been properly advertised. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Whitten? Well, actually, I have one. If, uh, or for Mr. Stan, if the Health and Human Services area is ready before the five year lease, how, how would that um, change be made on to make this facility? So we, would, we would go in and revise the lease to show the new space and take them out of the old space. On effective date of the move. So we get that within this contract. We would have the ability to do that. Yes. Okay. That's all right. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Any further questions? If not, public hearing is now open. Anybody care to comment? Second chance. Third and final opportunity. Public hearing is closed. Chairman, I move the Board of Supervisors vote to approve the proposed lease of the senior citizen to Shenandoah Area Agency on Aging Incorporated and authorize the Chairman of the Board of Supervisors and the Clerk of the Board of Supervisors to execute all necessary documents. Second. We move and second. Any further discussion? I think we've been helping out Esther Blake for quite a while, maybe at that location. Um, and I think they do a valuable service for their uh, older citizens. Um, and I think, you know, once we get that new complex finished, I think they'll be, they'll be able to even provide even more services. There's no further discussion. Let's have a roll call. Ms. Clavis? Aye. Mr. Murray? Aye. Mr. Chairman? Aye. Mr. Fox? Aye. Mr. Sayer? Aye. Motion approved. Fourth public hearing is the ordinance to amend and reordain section 172-39 and 172-40 prohibit and penalize the obstruction and encroachment of any street, highway, road, or other public right-of-way. Mr. Whitney. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. The county has had issues for the past couple of years with residents blocking public right-of-ways with vehicles, equipment, and installing gates that obstruct the right-of-way. The language of the amendments mirrors the language in Virginia Code Section 15.2, 2009, and the proposed amendments will prohibit the obstruction or encroachment on any street, highway, road, or other public right of way. The amendments will allow the county to find the party responsible up to $500 each day the obstruction continues. In addition, the county can charge the responsible party for the cost of removing the obstruction or charge the owner for the use of the public right of way. The public hearing has been properly advertised, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Do you have any questions for Mr. Whitten? And this just pertains to, as say, county roads, right of ways. This has nothing to do with uh, roads and private subdivisions. That's correct. This is roads where some roads and subdivisions are public right of ways, and some are private roads. It just depends on subdivision. But this would be wherever there's a public right of way, and there's a plat that's been dedicated as a public right of way, then this section would apply. So what happens, I know with some of the subdivisions that come to us for road issues, as far as speeding, ATVs, whatever, would this still apply to those? We'd have to look at the plat and see if it was de ever dedicated to the public. For instance, we had an issue on Old Dam Road down in that area where it was a road that was never actually built, but it was a public right of way that was dedicated to the public, where someone put the gate. So we said, no, you, under the state code, you can't block that right away, even though the road was never built. It's a public right away. And someone I had wanted to actually put in a road to build a well that, that served their house. So this basically would apply to situations where there's a platted public right away or where it's platted and there's actually an existing road there. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions? Yeah, I have another question. This applies like in subdivisions too? Would it apply um, like if somebody put a signpost in the middle of the right If it was a public right of way. So we'd have to do research to see whether or not it's a public right of way. Any further questions? Now in the public hearing, same rules apply. The public hearing is now open. Anybody here to address this? Second chance. Third final chance. Public hearing is now closed. It's a pleasure to board. Mr. Chairman, I move the Board of Supervisors to approve the proposed amendments to Section 172-39 and 172-40 of the Warren County Code to prohibit and <coughs> penalize the obstruction of any public right. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed. And now we adjourn. No, wait a <laughs> <laughs> we now have the main event. Um, as you have observed from the previous public hearings, there is a process to follow. And because there is a large number of folks here that wish to address us this evening, I'm asking that you limit your remarks to three minutes. In addition, we have received numerous correspondence on this matter, 
and that will be entered into the public record. Everyone who wishes to speak, whether you signed up or not, will be allowed to speak once. We ask you to state your name and address for the record. And I know this is an issue that both sides believe strongly in. Not that I believe otherwise, but I ask each of you to be civil and respectful and hear what each other has to say. So having said that, Mr. Stanley. Mr. Chair, members of the board and public, the Thunberg Farms Subdivision Property Owners Association has requested that the subdivision be added to the list of designated locations where shooting of firearms is prohibited. Thunberg Farms includes approximately 244 lots and 159 homes. Uh, the board discussed uh, the request at its work session on May the 1st. The board made that decision at that time not to conduct a survey itself of residents, but to receive a public hearing uh, to be held tonight. The board did request the staff obtain some additional information on the number of complaints of the violations of section 177-3 of the Warren County Code since 2015. A copy of that uh, report is included in your packet. Currently, the following subdivisions uh, are listed on the prohibition of shooting of firearms. Skyland Estates, Chandra Shores, Aspen Hill Farms, Skyland uh, Sky View Section, Lakefront Royal, Blue Mountain, Apple Mountain Lake South, High Knob, Stonewall Estates, Cedarville Heights, and the Bowling View Subdivision. Um, as part of the process, if it were so designated, uh, signs will have to be erected uh, by the Thunderbird Farms POA to indicate the ban on shooting. Um, and I'd like to, if Dwayne, if you could hit the lights, I've got a little short um, PowerPoint. I want to go over some of the questions that have come up and the board has asked me to address. So we had a previous request back in 2012 from the Thunderbird Farms POA. Uh, the Board of Supervisors held a public hearing in January of 2013 tabled action on the request until the POA conducted a mailing regarding resident support. At that time, the POA conducted a survey of POA members via the annual newsletter 2016 with the following results. 28 persons in favor of inclusion, 39 against, and 9 with no opinion or blank form. In September 2017, votes were counted to change the language in the Thunderbird Farms covenants to remove the no shooting language. 56 properties uh, voted in favor of removal, 110 properties against removal. This is citing your covenant. Number 13 is listed in the land records of Warren County, which states no use of firearms except for self defense shall be permitted in the subdivision. As written, the covenants allow the POA and property owners to prosecute or bring a suit against any person violating the covenants, not just this section. Section 14 says that the owner of any property encompassed by these covenants or any of their heirs or successors shall violate or attempt to violate any of the covenants herein. It shall be lawful for any other person or persons owning real estate situated in said subdivision or the Thunderbird Property Owners Association to prosecute any proceedings at law or in equity against a person or persons violating or attempting to violate any such covenants or due from such violations. In addition, the party bringing suit to enforce said covenants shall be entitled to reasonable attorney's fees and the cost of such prosecution. Thunderbird Farms POA mailed out a survey in February of 2018 asking for citizen feedback regarding being included under Chapter 177-3, the shooting prohibition in designated locations with the following results. 99 people, uh, 99 properties voted in favor of inclusion, 71 properties against inclusion. Uh, the request came before the board at the work session on May the 1st where the board decided to proceed with public hearing. One of the questions that's come up, some of the comments have said, only residential areas of Warren County have been included uh, in the prohibition of shooting. And that is not entirely correct. Uh, before going, there's a list of the subdivisions that are included. Skyline Estates is R1, residential one. Shindu Shores, R1. Aspen Hill Farms, R1. Lakefront Well, R1. Blue Mountain R1, Apple Mountain Lake South R1, High Knob R1, Stonewall Estates, the Zone Agricultural, 
Cedarville Heights R1, and Bowling View is a mixture of R1 and Ag Lot. So we have two districts that are currently two subdivisions currently identified that have some agricultural lots included. Um, the location of those subdivisions that are included in the new shooting uh, ban are shown on the map. So they're spread out uh, for, for the most part, uh, probably the north and east uh, parts of the county. Um, the other comment and question is five acre plus lots, this area is not very dense. You're correct in that the five acre density is not as probably overall as compared to like the skyline of the states. But when you look at this map, we put together 71 houses are within 100 feet of each other. 141 are within 200 feet of each other, and only about 17 have more than 200 feet separation uh, between the houses. So at least I want to present information to the board with regards to the density and the closeness of properties relative to each other. So that's all I have, Mr. Chairman, unless there are any questions. Uh, public hearing has been properly advertised, and uh, should be ready to go now. Do we have any questions for Mr. Stanley at this time? Hearing none. And at this time, based on what I said previously, we will now open the public hearing. Ms. Mouse, did anybody sign up? I wonder. <laughs> yes, sir, they did. Okay. Uh, first up, we have Bobby and Teresa Lamb. And as requested, please you state your name and address. My name is Bobby Lamb. I live at 188 Foxfire Court with my wife, Teresa. Um, we are here because we are not going to take anybody's rights away from them. Everybody that is opposing this is saying, you're taking our rights, you're taking our rights. We're not taking your rights. We're going by the law that everybody received when they bought their property. The only way we can get this rectified get this taken care of because the homeowners association cannot prosecute all these people. It will break us. We will not have money for this or that or whatever needs to be fixed in there. That's what some people don't understand. It costs money to do that stuff. So what we're asking you to do is to put us on that so that if somebody is doing this and you can point to that person and say that person's done it, the law can come in there and do what, whatever they need to do to check everything out. As it is now, and from what I've been told, we had a deer shot in our backyard, feet from our basement door, feet from where my mother-in-law smokes her cigarettes at night. We were told to stay in the house for her not to go outside at nighttime. Now we live off the beaten path, we're on Fox Fire Court, we have power lines right across our property, but when you shoot it in my backyard like that, that close to my house, it concerns me. For one thing, I have been shot by a person that's target practice. Bullets have no boundaries. Bullets do not know where property lines are at. Bullets do not care where they get. A bullet can go in the ground, it can go this way, it can go that way, or it can stay in the ground. That's the way it works. When you're out target practicing, I understand people want to do that. There's proper places to do it. Not in a subdivision. We just had a problem in another state, or in Virginia, where three houses got hit. And that shooting range had been there for 20 years. One weekend, so happens that three houses got hit. Three different ones. So that's something that we're looking at. I'm Teresa lockhart -Lam. Um, I just want to thank uh, the town and county, the government officials, fire and rescue and police for coming together for the service for Michael. He was a great nephew, and I do greatly appreciate the farewell. Um, my concern is, is that the area I live in is very heavily populated, and according to the map, and there's no place that I can stand that I cannot see at least two houses. And for me, that is a concern, so I do not feel that a discharge of a firearm in that area is a proper thing to be doing for safety purposes. Yeah, we're not trying to take anybody's Second Amendment right. They said they can't protect their property. In there it says that you can protect your property. That means if it's a fox, a snake, or whatever, it's after you or your animals or whatever, you have the right to put that down. 
And we're saying he has all this shooting for hours, shooting across people's yards, shooting in people's backyards, and everything. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Mouse? Tammy Holcomb.
Scott. Charles Prince. <laughs>
And I'm here to request that you add Thunder Farm to the county ordinance for recreational shooting. I'd like to pick up on something that Mr. Stanley said. He showed you a proximity map. Uh, the houses are somewhat close together, and the reason for that is the configuration of the lots. The original developer made long or longer, narrow lots in order to maximize the number of waterfront lots and min minimize the number of streets they had built. Uh, the upshot is the houses are close together. Now somebody could easily walk out of their house and go to the other part of their lot and have a wooded area and say it's safe to shoot. But because of the configuration of the lots, there is no place that I know of, Thunderbird Farms, where you could stand and be 200 feet away from every property line. The lots are just too thin. You go out that back door and stand there in the middle of your property, you might be 150 feet or 175 feet from everybody else's property but you're not going to be much more. You have a letter that uh, I left with uh, Ms. Mouse earlier. One of our uh, owners couldn't be here. Uh, she provided information about ammunition. And when you look at that, what you're going to see is that some of the rounds uh, have fairly long range uh, killing capacities. A 30 yard 6 is a common hunting rifle for deer in this area. A 22, as Mr. Murray pointed out in an earlier meeting, uh, could kill somebody at a distance of over a mile. So now you have somebody discharging a weapon uh, 150 or 175 feet from someone else's property, and the weapon has a range of three miles. Uh, and the trees are not an adequate buffer. I mean, it, that just doesn't work. A couple years ago, in late November, on a nice day, a man named Sean Nicely took his 17-year-old daughter to a wooded lot over in Shenandoah County. And they put up targets and they shot in full holes. And they shot and killed Gina Shoemaker. She was in a kitchen, 936 feet away, through the woods. Her house was not even visible from the point where they were firing. There was no mouse. They weren't being particularly careless. It was somebody shooting on a vacant lot that was tree, and they couldn't see the consequences of, of their actions. Now, some of the people say they hear shooting, and they're not concerned. You know, they're somewhat sanguine about the noise they heard shooting. It might be another neighborhood. And uh, Ms. Shoemaker might have been unconcerned. But concerned and terrified or uh, unaware, it doesn't change whether or not she was actually at risk. People shooting military style assault weapons and high powered rifles in an area where there are people is somewhat unsafe. I walk in my woods all year round. You know, I love, I love the woods. Uh, and somebody's not going to be able to see me through the underbrush and the trees. Uh, everybody's pointed out the votes, you know, there was a vote to change the covenant, there was a survey, uh, there was this and that, and those votes are by lot, and I wanted to touch upon that, because no one here was elected by the majority of adults in your district. Uh, no one here was elected by the majority of registered voters. You were elected by the majority of registered voters that chose to vote, people who chose to participate. We sent out a survey, we got a 69% response rate. It's not 100%. But the state law requires that our votes be by lot. We are a, a, a non-stock corporation. Uh, the law directs that uh, the members' rights are controlled by the uh, Articles of Incorporation and the bylaws, and ours make it clear that membership is pertinent to the ownership of a lot and cannot be separated. And there is a member for every lot where there is an assessment. I have the count as 245. Mr. Stanley has his 244 lots. But uh, all I know is that I get a bill for each lot that I own, and I get a vote. And it's been that way in Thunderbird Farms for uh, 40 years. Uh, with that said, let me point out that if you ignore the law, you make up any other standard that you want, and other people might have one that they want, it doesn't change the result. The majority of the people that chose to participate want to be added to this code. And unless you have a question for me, I thank you for your time. Any questions for Mr. Richardson? Thank you, sir. Ms. Nels. Joan Richardson. Good evening. My name is Joan Richardson. I live in Thunderbird Farms at 1080 Stony Bottom Road. Of course, that's in Front Royal. 
Uh, about 34 years ago, my family purchased property in Thunderbird Farms in Warren County. When we bought the property, we knew that recreational shooting was prohibited by the covenants. That fact was one of the reasons we purchased the property. The covenants are a contract with property owners to organize and govern the community. We assumed that our neighbors would keep that contract. Unfortunately, some of the residents don't feel they have to keep the portion of the contract specific to recreational shooting. Everyone re received a copy of the covenants when they bought their land, so ignorance of the contract is not a valid excuse. Those who wanted to engage in recreational shooting should have bought property where it was allowed. I am asking the Warren County Board of Supervisors to include Thunderbird Farms on the no shooting list created under County Code 177.3 since some residents refuse to honor their contract under the covenants. This is what the majority of property owners property owners in Thunderbird Farms want as demonstrated by recent votes to keep the covenant and another vote to seek inclusion under the county code. This action is not a threat to anybody's rights since the recreational shooting was never permitted under the covenants. It certainly would not be an infringement on anyone's Second Amendment rights since there is no threat to anyone's right to, and I quote from the Second Amendment, keep and bear arms. The request made by the majority of residents to be included on the no shooting list was made because of safety concerns. I personally am concerned for my safety. My family owns multiple lots and we have cut trails through our property so that we can enjoy our woods even in the summer when there is dense understory. When I walk the trails, I am in close proximity to the property line of five neighbors. If my neighbors decide to shoot for fun, I am at risk because they would have no way of knowing I am on my trail. I do believe that I should have the right to enjoy my property and not be concerned about being injured or worse. I have certainly heard shooting and know that it happens. I believe it would be a significant deterrent to recreational shooting if Thunderbird Farms were placed on the no shooting list. If that were to happen, those residents who hear shooting and feel at risk can ask the Sheriff's Office to assist. Deputies are trained to handle complaints and are recognized as having the authority to investigate. Investigating shooting complaints belongs in the hands of the Sheriff's Office and not with a homeowner or the Thunderbird Farms HOA Board of Directors. I would hope that those neighbors who refuse to honor their contract under the covenants would obey the law. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Mills? Philip Van Cleef. Chairman, uh, my name is Philip Van Cleve. I'm the president of the Virginia Citizens Defense League. I'm here representing an organization, and not myself as an individual. I live in Chesterfield County. Um, we have uh, um, about 6,500 paid members, another 28,000 monitor VA alerts, and a lot of gun owners. Uh, the concern that we have is we, you know, as the state continues to grow, there's going to be less and less places where a person can, can shoot a gun. And uh, people often move to the country for that, that freedom, that liberty. And um, what we don't like to see would be the, the county needlessly stepping into agricultural areas, or the, them zone that way, and saying, you know, we need to restrict shooting there. Um, and also, for things like covenants, uh, the homeowner association should, should enforce their covenants. Uh, they talk about being expensive. Well, they've got a lot of things to enforce. Why well, they like you know, homeowner association as well? And they, you know, they do they do enforce what they have to enforce. And if you enforce it once, that does send a message to everybody else. But it's really not something that I would think that the county uh, should be stepping into. And also, if there is any danger, certainly, and certainly in the cases where somebody, you know. I guess hunting on somebody else's property, the sheriff can't enforce 
that some of the key laws here, if you have reckless endangerment, the uh, sheriff can step in for that uh, and do that. And there's a lot of other uh, uh, laws that the sheriff can enforce. In fact, some counties strictly have that. They, uh, Prince, uh, Prince George, for example, simply lets uh, state law prevail. They don't have any no shooting zones per se. It's, uh, it's all falls under the uh, doing so in a safe and responsible manner. And if not, then the sheriff shows up. So that's, uh, anyhow, if there's no questions, that's my statement. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Andrew Yates. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Andrew Yates. I live at uh, 127 Rock Ledge Court, Front Royal. I've lived there since 1994. I'm here in opposition to inclusion to this code here. Uh, this is the third time I've had to come here before you as a law-abiding, tax-paying, homeowners association, dues-paying citizen. And I've had to come here three times to protect my rights because of these. I, let, me, let me start. I, I've never experienced any issues with, nor have I had any complaints about shooting in our neighborhood and I'm a waterfront property owner. The first time we came down here, they tried to stop shooting on the river. And being a waterfront property owner, I was never even asked my opinion that time. I've had many, many occasions where there have been hunters on the river, waterfowl hunters, and I've spoken to them many times. And they're very respectful, very honest people, and I've never had any issues with them. This, in, this issue is again being pushed by a small percentage of very vocal individuals who've now had a vote, which you all required from the second time I came here. A good portion of those votes are from people that do not even live in our community. They don't even live in Warren County. But one way or another, they're against it. That's their right. As I've stated here before, and in the property owner, in the homeowners association meetings before, most, if not all, the shooting is coming from the other side of the river. Uh, the last homeowners association meeting I was in, one of those very vocal individuals stated, and I quote, "I do not want any shooting within a mile of my home." Well. I've got a few questions I would like to ask you before you vote, and I'll be done. First of all, is a mile diameter juris, juris, is a mile diameter jurisdiction around our homes a taxpaying right that I wasn't aware of? I'm not sure. If this does pass, are you going to go to Goonie Creek Salvage next? That's within a mile, and you're going to take their rights away because they shoot over there religiously with the AR-15s, with the handguns. I, I'm a firearm owner myself. I know them when I hear them. They're right across the river from me. Across the river, upriver from me, there's an 86-acre farm over there for sale right now. They want like a million and a half for it. They're very, hunt, they're very avid hunters and shooters over there also. I know it. I hear it all the time. Are we going to go over there next and tell them they're not allowed to shoot anymore? Because... That's within a mile. How about the National Forest? As the crow flies, that's within a mile. Are we going to stop them shooting there too? When will it stop and who will be next? With that being said, I, I, I respectfully request that you vote no again. And hopefully we won't have to come back and you won't give in to the squeaky wheels. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Good enough. Chuck Way. Hello, I'm Chuck Way. Um, I live at 216 Running Bear Court. Uh, my family and I moved to Thunderbird Farms uh, 18 years ago this November. I've been attracted to Thunderbird Farms because it is close to the National Forest. It's also close proximity to the river and Passage Creek. I'm an outdoor person. Um, I'm a hook and bullet guy. I do not shoot on my own property. 
because before I signed the papers and bought the property, I read the covenants and I saw that they don't want shooting there. And then once I moved in, I could see clearly that there are houses everywhere. And I thought maybe my neighbors don't want to hear me shooting because guns are very loud. Uh, a lot of uh, the comments I hear tonight are about safety. My comments would be more about common courtesy. These guns, when, when you're shooting, it's, and it, it's not like a lawnmower or a chainsaw. You can't get away from it. You can't go in the house and put the windows up because I've tried that. The, the report of the guns echoes throughout the house and you just have to sit and endure it until your neighbor's done. And I, I just don't think that's right. I think we're way too close to shoot. I love to shoot. I don't shoot on my own property. And I would appreciate the protection of the 177. So thank you very much, appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Who's else? Jim Capelli. Hello, my name is Jim Propelli. I live at 266 Eagle Drive, it's in Front Wall, also in Thunderbird Farms. And thank you for your time today. Um, initially, uh, I'd like to say that I'm opposed to the inclusion uh, under 177, and I'm asking that you please deny the request um, to include Thunderbird Farms. I do not believe we have a shooting problem. Uh, I do also live along the river, uh, as one of the other speakers spoke about. We do hear shooting all the time. Most of it is across the river. Uh, we're across from the state park. State park is closed. There's lots of areas on either side of me that you hear this shoot. Um, again, my request is to not this. Please. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ms. Mills. Sean Davis. Good evening. Thanks for your time. Yes, sir. Sean Davis, 1010 Thunder Road, <clears throat> against 177.3. I'm the father of four small children who we care, my wife and I care for with love. My wife and I would prefer to live in general, prefer to live on unrestricted land, but the HOAH has put us in a uh, situation where we don't really have that choice. So here I am involved in HOA politics. <clears throat> Our concern is that the presence of police will stimulate crime. That's not something I'm presenting statistics on, but there is, it does stand to reason as a possibility that if you have a place that's safe, generally speaking, and, and there may, <clears throat> my opinion that there need not be a presence of police, then when you bring police, sometimes it brings crime. Don't have any stats on that, but it's something to consider when you do things like this. Because uh, Thunderbird Farms is currently a very safe place, in my opinion, and they're very secure with their children there. I prefer that this matter be dropped forever. However, I ask at a minimum that the board not entertain this topic any further unless the property of Thunderbird Farms board can present a verified, certified, something of that nature, two-thirds uh, vote that is consistent with the procedure for a covenants change because objectively this matter has the effects of a covenants change even though technically it is not. Uh, something at the presentation here I want to throw in also. The number 99 to 71 was so overwhelming, but <clears throat> it's important. I ran it through the calculator really quick once I saw that. It's only 58%. If you were to, to do it two thirds, you'd need 114. 113 point something, so you need a, that number would actually have to be 114 for it to be overwhelmed. Just want you to consider that as you think about this. When you see the 99 over 71, it's actually not that uh, overwhelming. All right, and all this is based on my mine and my wife's chosen values for our children's safety that we already see as being secure where we live. Very happy there and their healthy developments, children, and also I say this with sensitivity to uh, those neighbors here that are concerned. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Ms. Mouse. Skip Sims. 
Mr. Chairman, members of the board, my name is Skip Sims. I live at 43 Stony Bottom Road, Front Royal in Thunderbird. Uh, we've lived there 20 years. Uh, I'm a gun owner, uh, concealed handgun permit holder, an active recreational shooter, uh, a veteran. Uh, but I get plenty of my recreational shooting at a recognized range in Warren County, an established range in Warren County. Well, I support inclusion of Thunderbird Farms under 177-3, and I do it as a practical matter. Uh, while I, resport, I, I support responsible recreational shooting, uh, it's the irresponsible or untrained resident, weekend renter, uh, latchkey kid, a jack light hunter, wannabe machine gunner that's worrisome. And then there's the whole matter of Tannerite. Uh, you'll have to agree it's foolish to assume that all of our three or four hundred individuals who live in Thunderbird Farms are trained and responsible in the use of firearms. Uh, at its core, this is a subdivision issue, best decided locally by Thunderbird residents. Uh, you've probably each been slammed by a bunch of emails that all sound, or many sound, very similar. Uh, they may have misspelled Ms. Gladys's name with an R, in fact, which should have one of the quirks of those emails. Uh, please consider where this advice is coming from, and let's keep the focus local. Uh, our residents have spoken. In multiple votes, the association members reaffirmed our long-held covenant against recreational shooting. Remember, for at least 20 years, you've been able to shoot in Thunderbird Farms in self-defense, and that closely parallels your ordinance. Uh, so why would any resident who intends to honor the covenant in our deeds have a problem with inclusion under 177-3. And rest assured that despite telephone call statistics, recreational shooting is a continuing problem in Thunderbird Farms. Uh, most of us hear and see shooting. Most recently it was 12.26 a.m. last Saturday night. I didn't call anybody. So why don't we call the sheriff or call a board member? I, for one, haven't reported it to our association board because they can't respond in a safe and effective manner. I reported one incident to the sheriff's department who said that it might only be enforceable as a noise ordinance violation. But here's the catch. They don't have a sound pressure level meter or didn't at the time. Fool me once, shame on you. A major sticking point here is enforcement. Of course, the covenants aren't enforced by the county. Uh, they're enforced by the association or private <coughs> lawsuit, as Mr. Family mentioned. But our volunteer board members don't have conflict training. They sleep at night and they aren't already on patrol. A little more time? Thank you. Uh, clearly, law enforcement response would be more effective. They'd certainly be better trained and equipped to handle tense situations that always involve firearms and frequently involve alcohol. And if you're worried about more government in our subdivision, uh, as one of the earlier speakers mentioned, that, that uh, genie is already out of the bottle. There are at least a dozen or so gun-related ordinances that the sheriff will already be out there enforcing. So here's the bottom line. The Thunderbird membership has recently re reaffirmed our ban on recreational shooting. Our board isn't equipped to enforce that ban. Hiring outside help doesn't make sense when local law enforcement has the capability and the qualifications. I respectfully ask that you add Thunderbird to the growing list of subdivisions where recreational shooting is covered under 177-3. This will give responding deputies, uh, who, as an aside, have suggested that we apply for inclusion under 177.3. Uh, it would give them an effective tool to help ensure the safety and welfare of your citizens. And I thank you. Thank Any you. questions? I'd be glad to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for the 14th time, Ms. Mounts. Ryan Mitchell. Yeah, my name is Lyle Henshaw. I live at 305 Stony Bottom Road. Uh, a couple people have already mentioned, even if you pass this amendment, it's not going to uh, affect us. 
most of the shooting is across the river. I heard the shooting of Skip Bird, uh, Skip Bird the other uh, week. It wasn't from Thunderbird. In fact, one time I even called the Sheriff's Department. I thought it was next, right outside my house, and somebody was an AR with a slide stock. It wasn't. It's coming from across the river. It just echoes extremely loud in our area. In fact, I was on the board for six years as vice president. I had a call from one of our uh, members at the time, and she said, people are shooting. Can you stop it? It's in the amendment. I went and talked to her, and while I was talking to her, shooting erupted. It wasn't in Thunderbird. Again, that was across the river. This isn't really a question of safety. This is a question of politics and people that just don't like firearms. And people with assault weapons haven't seen too many of those. In fact, I'm a, uh, I'm a certified range officer, and I am up a peacemaker. I also uh, am a certified pistol instructor. What I see is AR-15s, but those are not assault weapons. AR stands for armor light, not assault rifle or automatic weapon. It's a misnomer. But all I'm saying is, I've also seen poachers, so the hunting that goes on are people coming into our area, poaching a few times. I've seen that about two or three times over the years, since 93. And, uh, like I said, most of that recreational shooting is across the river, not in Thunderbird Farms. And I don't live uh, too far away from, I actually live between uh, Skip and between uh, the Richardsons, and I hear exactly what they're hearing all the time. But it echoes off the rocks. In fact, one time somebody called uh, the Sheriff's Department years ago because somebody, he said that somebody was uh, dynamiting in the river fishing. It wasn't. I turned on a, a, a movie showing my friend the difference between a powered subwoofer and a non-powered subwoofer, and he thought it was dynamite. So the rocks and the hills and their echo and it just very misleading. Thank you. Um, I guess I, I'm against this uh, proposal. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, there's just a first initial here. K Henschel. Source, 
It's almost always outside of our area. Um, you will also find that, over, that on several occasions, the sheriff's office was notified of target shooting, recreational shooting, in advance. Just like the way we do it, if you're going to burn leaves in the fall, you call the fire department and let them start burning, and you tell them that you're done. The sheriff's office has been very uh, appreciative of the people, and they called in and said, that's thanks, we appreciate it. They think the people are out there that's, that it's safe to shoot as well. Um, I don't think the sheriff would allow that if he, if he didn't think it was safe. In fact, if you look at the reports from the Warren County Sheriff's Office over the last several years, you will find no arrests, no charges, no problems with recreational shooting. The only problem is the number of unfounded complaints. If you place us under 1773, you can expect that number to increase dramatically. Why? Because these leading, those leading this effort know the only way to have their neighborhood, the only way to have their neighbor arrested is to make shooting illegal because it certainly isn't unsafe. Driven our roads, walk our properties, and you're welcome to visit mine, you will get a clear picture. Come during uh, hunting season, and you might understand why so many calls to the sheriffs ended. Sorry, sir, but the shooting isn't coming from Thunderbird Farms. Plain and simple shooting is not a problem in our neighborhood. There's never been a single firearms complaint submitted to our board of directors for our property owners association. None. And that's based on what they have told us. There's also a few residents trying to criminalize the safe and legal practices of their neighbors and a board that refuses to do their job. A board that has stated publicly that they do not want to enforce our covenants, they want the county to do it for them. Please force them to do their job. Vote no this evening. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Susan Utley. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Um, I have, um, my name is Susan Utley, I live at 1886 Keeper Drive. We've lived there since 2001, and <coughs> I've never felt unsafe around shooting. I also do not shoot on my property, even though I own guns and I am an avid shooter. Um, I do not shoot on my property because when we purchased the property, the covenant said that we couldn't. So we obey our covenants. If we didn't obey our covenants, we would expect our association to do something about it. The problem is they very rarely do anything about any covenant violations. They collect the dues. When people make complaints, they don't address them. Um, I understand that the map that Mr. Stanley put up, it can be a little deceiving. It's flat. We have terrain. We have burns. We have um, houses that are on hills, and it drops down 200 feet to the bottom of their property. My property is 300 feet wide by 1,000 feet long. It's seven acres. I have five acres empty on one side, seven acres empty on the other. So the claim that someone made that you cannot stand anywhere on your property and be within more than 150 feet from another home is simply false. I can stand on my property and be about 1,200 feet from someone else's home. And most of the complaints that come to Warren County Sheriff's Office come from an isolated area. You will find it the same addresses in the same area where maybe they are a little closer. But the majority of us enjoy large acreage. We have about, I would say, three occupied houses in 65 acres where I am. So to make us fall under this because a so-called majority of the property owners want it doesn't make sense. And I know that there's a lot of numbers thrown around, the 99 to 71. Well, our POA has tried this several times. And they got their answer, but it wasn't the number they looked for. So they did it again, and they did it again. And they finally drafted a ballot that was so confusing to members and so offending that some people threw it away. Some people claimed they didn't receive it. I know that I mailed my ballot back, but they didn't get it, apparently. They eventually counted my vote when I complained, but they didn't get it. And they, when, when it comes down to the numbers, they only have a third support from the property owners. And the reason why that is, is that they want to claim one property lot gets one vote. Well, we're not at the property owners association level anymore. We're at the county level. 
and each individual, may I continue? Yes, please. Each individual has one vote and one opinion here. Not six, because they own six properties. Not three, because they own three properties. They get one. And that's my opinion on that. But the simple fact is, we do not feel that it's <coughs> unsafe to shoot in Thunderbird Farms, regardless of the fact that I don't shoot. Um, it's all about preserving our ability to change our covenants. Like one other person mentioned, if you pass this, you are effectively taking away another right that I was given when I purchased this property. It may have said no shooting of firearms, but I also have a covenant in there that says that I can change those covenants. Property owners have a right to do that. And if you place us under 1773, you effectively take that right away from us. Um, will I shoot if we change the rules? Maybe, maybe not. But I certainly have the safety to do so on my property, and I would like to have that choice um, should that time come. But the responsibility, of course, is on you, and if you vote to criminalize safe and legal recreational shooting while ignoring the zoning and ignoring the population density, then it ceases to become a safety issue and it becomes a gun issue. Um, Warren County Planning Department designates Thunderbird Farms as low-density agricultural, meaning low-density population. And the Code of Virginia only allows for heavily populated areas. And according to the numbers, we don't even have half of our properties with homes on them. Um, and the Code of Virginia also has a provision that protects all the rights of all Thunderbird Farms property owners on five acres or more, which is all of us, to hunt with a firearm on, in agriculturally zoned. So even if we're included under 1773, if we have agricultural pursuits, we can hunt with a firearm based on the law. So it wouldn't really do a whole lot. Um, and then we also have the Warren County Sheriff's reports that do not support the conclusion that this is a dangerous activity because we do not have any convictions, we do not have any arrests, we do not have any injuries. Um, so basically what I'm asking you to do is to deny the request for inclusion based on the simple fact that opinions don't change population density and Thunderbird Farms we do not believe it qualifies under the law. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have one question. Sure. Could you vouch for the previous speaker? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think I can. Who's vouch? Jim Morris. My name is Jim Morris. I've uh, lived in Thunderbird Park since 1987. We've never had a problem with shooting down there in the subdivision that I know of. And I'm against 177.3. Thank you, sir. Ms. Ellis? Charles Eldry. <coughs> My name is Charles Albert. I live at 44 High Court. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I've lived in Thunderbird Farms now for almost 16 years. Um, I have heard gunfire from my home, and it is always, as I stated before, on the other side of the river. Um, when uh, the statement is utterly made, considering the terrain, when you look at the map, map shows you one thing when you look at the terrain. My property is 9.46 acres. It rises sharply from the road. My house sits on a hill and on either side my property drops off roughly 80 feet to the bottom of the ravine. Um, there are plenty of places on my property where I could be 200 feet from a home and shoot safely on my property. I do own a firearm. I have never fired it on my property today, simply because the rules state, the bylaws state that I cannot. Um, 
this isn't a discussion about whether or not we're changing the bylaw and suddenly are allowing shooting on our property. We're not. The discussion here is about whether or not we want the county to come in and enforce it. Um, I have already on occasion had a, a deputy come to my home and ask me, and this has been a few years ago, if I had discharged a firearm. I had Obviously, local law enforcement will respond if there's a phone call made about a shot being fired or someone who thinks there was a shot fired. Um, putting us under 177-3, however, again, as Mrs. Utley stated, it changes our ability to change our bylaws if we see such need to in the future. At that point, we're locked in. Um, and I disagree with inclusion, uh, primarily for that reason. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mrs. Marks? Dan Erica? My name is Dan Arico, I live at 165 Pinecrest Street. I'm a certified pistol instructor and chief range safety officer, and I currently coach a youth pistol team. I know something about firearms. And what bothers me about the, this measure is that it's an either-or proposition. There are differences between firearms. There's a big difference between an air rifle and a 50 caliber barrel. One can be safely fired on a half acre lot, the air rifle. The barrack, you're going to have to go out to Peacemaker to find a place to shoot it. The other thing is where you're shooting means a lot. If you've constructed a burn or you're making use of a naturally occurring burn, you can shoot a 22, you can shoot a handgun. There's a lot of rifles you can shoot, uh, larger caliber, and you won't endanger anybody. I think what needs to be done here is that the covenants need to be changed to uh, require that you shoot safely. Thank you, sir. Ms. Mouse? Kim Morgan. I'm Kim Horgan. I live at 1159 Stony Bottom Road. I'm really nervous, so I've been before you once before, and I am against the inclusion of 177.3 for Thunderbird Farms. I am local. I live in Thunderbird Farms. I've been, been in there for almost 20 years, and I have never once felt unsafe. I am on the river, and I down on the river, you see people coming up in their rowboats first thing in the morning. You hear that little do 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 with their motors, and they get out there and they do duck hunt. It reverberates everywhere. You can hear it. Um, but I've never felt unsafe. I walk with my dogs. My cats even join me. Um, I do it probably three or five times a week. I work in Harrisonburg, so I can't walk every single day. Um, I did agree when I came into Thunderbird Farms and signed the covenants that I would not shoot, but I did not agree to treating my neighbors as criminals. I did not agree to imposing a $2,500 fine, and I did not agree to put them in jail for 12 months. I would prefer on my walks to have a sidearm on, on me in case I saw a bear or something like that, but I don't. I have pepper spray. So, you know, if I do run across something, I do have a way. Um, I have been at many of our board meetings, and it is a very contentious situation. It's very uncomfortable. Every time I go to a meeting, my stomach churns because I know that the personalities and the way we look at things is very different. There's a lot of not respectful ways that people are treated for not seeing things the same way. In the last meeting that I attended, I asked our board, do we have a systemic issue in our neighborhood of firearms being discharged? And I was told no. I also asked 
do we have a procedure for our property owners, board of directors to follow if there is someone who is abusing this covenant? And it's a covenant, it is not a law. And I was told by our director, I mean by our treasurer, after they all mumbled a little bit, he threw up his hands and said, we can't prove it anyway. So to me, asking you to ask the sheriff's department to protect something that is not a systemic problem is a waste of time. If the people who are actually having a problem with this came forward to the board and put in you know, a true complaint, there is a process that they can follow to get this done. But we don't have a problem. So personally, I'm against it. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Scott Fletcher. <coughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. I'm Scott Fletcher. I live at 364 Stony Bottom Road. I listed all my neighbors. Um, I apologize that we're even here. This is crazy. For 27 years, I hear about all the rules. Has anybody been prosecuted? I don't believe so. You know, if we have such a problem, why do we not have this list of criminals and people prosecuted already? I don't think we even need to be here. Our association has gone through this numerous times in our meetings, and the majority of our people, or some of the majority, claim that, you know, they should have the right because they all agree. Well, we go by two thirds, and they don't meet that requirement. <clears throat> I sent you all an email. My neighbor sent one also, asked me representing he's out of town. As this young lady stated, there's so much stuff that's been going out from the board, from these special groups. We have this neighborhood secret society that's been sending letters to people. Nobody knows what to believe. They don't know what, they're confused. We voted on this, and like I said, we shouldn't even be here. Our association, has not, our board has not gotten the answers they want from the members, so they bring it to you to try to have you enforce it. So I oppose it. I know a lot of my neighbors oppose it. Some couldn't be here tonight. And I thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Clifford Merrick. I'm Clifford Merrick. I live at 314 Stony Bottom Road. I've been there in Thunderbird Farms for over uh, 14 years. Um, I'm not sure where all this recreational shooting in Thunderbird is happening because I don't see it around me. Like other state, all the firearm shooting is off other properties boarding Thunderbird Farms. So putting us under 177 is just not going to make us any safer. They're still going to be shooting around us. And plus the river being there, we have foul hunters. You're not going to be able to stop them from shooting either. So it's just irrelevant to be put on 177. Thanks. Ms. Mills? Mr. Chairman, no one else has signed up? Is there anyone out there that would care to speak again that has not spoken once? If you haven't spoken, you may come up. I think he got his hand up first. What's your hand? I'm Rick Burkhart. I live at 1266 T Bird Drive, Buffalo. Um, so we are back, back here six years later or five years later, we're going through many of the same things that we did back then. Just have a few quick comments. Um, don't have anything prepared. I think a lot of folks here have already made some very good points tonight. Thunderbird Farms is located in an area that's surrounded by other properties, the National Forest, the large farms across the river on the point, further downriver, further upriver. You know, if we're going to get into this, we might as well just shut the whole county down. You know, years ago, um, as Loudoun County was starting to get bigger, there was a saying that, uh, you know, don't Fairfax Loudoun. Well, a lot of folks come to Warren County because of the rural nature of the area. A lot of folks never leave Warren County because of the rural, rural area 
raw nature of there. Um, we don't need the Fairfax Warren County. Uh, wouldn't be the right thing to do. Don't Fairfax Warren County. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. By the way, that was opposed. <laughs> I, I gather. Well, my name is Lisa Jones. I live at 258 Landsburn Road in Bentonville, Virginia. I do not live in Thunderbird Farms. I've been told I do not have a dog in this fight. I just wanted to touch on something that nobody else has mentioned. I'm not here to argue whether people should or shouldn't shoot guns in Thunderbird Farms. I understand that it's in their covenants that they are not allowed to already. My concern is that this, if you pass this, that opens the door and we're going to keep continuing this trend in more and more subdivisions. And that's it. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. I saw another hand. Is there someone else here to speak? Yes, sir. No? Your name. Hi, I'm Thomas Jones. I live at 355 McCoy's Ford Road. I've been a resident there for the past 25 years. I'm not aware of any issues in our area with shooting being a problem or anything unsafe. I've heard a lot of comments from both sides of the oppositions here tonight. Um, one thing I would like to just bring my attention is I hear about bans on recreational shooting. I hear about bans on the covenant for no shooting. And I hear people say I can shoot a fox or something that's a danger to my property. It's my understanding 177.3 specifically prohibits discharge of a firearm, period. I see nothing in that code, unless I read it wrong, that uh, breaks out a difference as far as recreational shooting and defending the property. And that could end up being a court case that the property owner would spend a lot of money to defend his rights as defending his property. And I'm opposed to the 177. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. I'd make a motion that you can discuss it. Okay. 
I move that the Board of Supervisors deny the request to amend section 177-3 of the Warren County Code to add Thunderbird Farm subdivision to the list of designated locations where the shooting with farms is prohibited. I make that motion because you would like to have a second. Yes, okay. Sorry. Second. It's moved and second. Now, is there any discussion? I make that motion because what I didn't hear was shooting that was taking place right in the subdivision of uh, uh, many people had been. But I did hear about shooting taking place outside of the subdivision. So, uh, I, and there's other reasons I didn't hear that they're, they're having the problem that perhaps it would cause the inclusion of the sheriff's oversight into that area. Uh, so that's, that's the, the reasons I'm seeing right now. Is there any other comments? I had a question, uh, maybe for the uh, uh, county attorney, as far as one gentleman that said something about interpretation of that. Put it up. And the other thing I had too, on the follow-up, you may not be able to answer that. Uh, Cutting 13 does say uh, uh, there will be no discharge of firearms except in self-defense. And, and, and they are correct that, that there is a, a growing population of coyotes. I know one place out in Rockland, I think they've already shot nine uh, coyotes on their property. Uh, so I didn't know how that would be interpreted either. So, Mr. Whitten? Uh, so there are except, a couple of exceptions in the section. The first is it doesn't apply to law enforcement officers. The second is it doesn't apply to any person who is lawfully protecting life or property. So that would include someone shooting a fox, shooting someone trying to break into the house. Another exception is firearms doesn't include air operated or gas operated weapons. The one gentleman that mentioned air rifles, it doesn't apply to air rifles. Uh, so those are the exceptions that would apply. So those, those exceptions apply, and I'll take, I mean, they have to be applied. For every subdivision that's been added, if someone was shooting a box, was killing their chicken, they couldn't be prosecuted. If someone was defending their house or someone breaking in, they couldn't be prosecuted. You're, you're not saying that if this was adopted, that it would be okay to shoot Mr. Fox? Unless he was still a man. Unless he was still a man. So you want to put him down in his Okay. Any other questions or discussion? Most important thing, Mr. Chairman, it's not violating anybody's Second Amendment rights. I have a concealed carry also. Um, and I have a few pieces at home. They most have to tie it on that one. That's correct. I always carry it. Uh, if it were affecting the Second Amendment rights, I'd be standing side by side with you. But it's not affecting. We also have a covenant that they knew when they moved in, no shooting. <coughs> that starts as an HOA issue. And if an HOA can't work together as neighbors and resolve an issue, the only recourse they have is to come to the board. And that's what they're doing at this time. It sounds like a disjointed association. Mr. Fox. Uh -huh. I just wanted to point out that they do have the, the facility and the means to change their, their covenants to uh, the last uh, shooting, but it's written now written, they're they not allowed to <coughs> shoot anyway. So that's, that's what I'm looking at. Do you have anything else? No. <laughs> Mr. Sears? Uh, I mean, I've that's a very difficult decision and um, I feel bad for those who don't feel safe. I just finished up a class that dealt with planning and zoning and in there it discussed across the nation that when you have lots that are long and narrow it's poor planning and not to say that your neighborhood has such poor planning but, but that's that's what's happened in your area. And, and it can cause some congestion cluster um, that's favorable toward a developer when they, when they do it. Um, it, it I, you know, I, I'm gonna have reservations with my vote, but you'll hear it here in a little bit, I guess. 
And that's how we'll keep you in suspense. <laughs> and the motion is to deny, right? What we have on the floor. Yes. Just to clarify. I believe we answered that question. Well, that's, that's that's because that gets confusing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The motion is to deny. To deny. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, just a couple things. Uh, somebody said there was a deer shot on their property. I would think that would be illegal no matter what. Obviously, it would be difficult to find out who that person was, and I would certainly hope that was not somebody within the subdivision. Um, and I guess there can be calls made to the sheriff's office, depending on the nature of that call, that could come out. I think they have maybe in the past. And then it come back and said that it was a safe shooting situation as opposed uh, within respect to the Virginia Code. Um, and it seemed like that could be proved maybe for uh, 7 14 kind of place. So yeah, I agree that uh, I would not want to walk up to a property where somebody was shooting and not others were walking into it. And that would be kind of trespassing. It would also be, uh, like I said, you don't know what you're walking into. Um, and in my opinion, there are several issues that stand out to me. The first, Covenant 13 states there will be no discharge of firearms in the subdivision except for self-defense. So it seems to me that once you've moved into Thunderbird Farm, you willingly agree to this provision. And this is not about taking away your firearms. It's merely saying you're not supposed to fire them within the subdivision. And we have several people that said they own guns, they shoot, but they don't shoot in, in the uh, subdivision. And then the other thing is, Covenant 14 does offer a remedy to address the breaking of a covenant. And it is somewhat cumbersome to do that process. Uh, but again, it's still a process that can be followed. I think somebody mentioned too, it may be the first time it happens, and maybe that sends a signal. Um, I would think that if the sheriff investigated somebody changed state shooting, and they uh, found out they complied, that there could be proof that they were shooting within the subdivision, and then that way you can take it to the next step. And I know that this has been going on for some time uh, before. I think one gentleman said he'd been here three times. Um, we certainly want to do everything this evening to make sure he didn't have to come back. Uh, but field boards throughout the county are in a difficult position. They're basically volunteers. They're also your neighbors. And there's a lot to keep up with in addition to having a job, family, and other duties. And I spoke with several of you about serving on the DOA board, and you had concerns of being sued individually for an action that your board may take. And I offer one solution um, at the risk of one of our board members taking as a conflict of interest. But one solution that would address this is to look to a director's and officer's policy, you know, to get from somewhere further that would offer some protection from getting sued. Again, this is your community. If things were to continue to be contentious, you may find it difficult to find anyone to serve on your board. And then what would happen? Buy insurance. Buy insurance. You get find your seat. And the folks that I have spoken, I've spoken to several of you on both sides of the issue. And I found them, as well as tonight, that everybody was intelligent and articulate and stated their points easily understood. And regardless of the decision that we make this evening, and even though it may be wishful thinking, I would encourage both sides to appoint several members from each opposing view and try to come to a resolution that all can live with. And then that way, hopefully everybody um, can come to something that, that, that we won't have to come back before this war. However, if there were additional complaints and stuff, it very likely could come back to us. And we'll have a new board a year and a half, I think. And they may be willing to uh, go to uh, section 177.3. Any other comments? Hearing none, Ms. Mouse? Mr. Sayer? Okay, now, look, the motion before us is to deny. Aye. Mr. Fox? Aye. Mr. Chairman? Aye. Mr. Murray? Begrudgingly, aye. Ms. Lavis? Aye. Motion carries. 
I want to thank everybody for coming out. I want to thank you for the uh, manner that everybody spoke. And I would ask you to indulge me one second, please. We have a closed session. That's it. So if you would allow us to just go ahead and read the motion and go on that, and everybody's free to leave. You're welcome to stay. <laughs> but we have to. So you just give us uh, one minute. Next item is a closed session. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move the board enter into a closed meeting under provisions of section 2.2-3711A1 of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act for the discussion or consideration of the assignment, appointment, promotion, performance, demotion, salaries, and resignation of a specific public officer of the public body. I further move the discussion be limited to the joint telling advisory board. I also move the board enter into a closed meeting under provisions of section 2.2-3711A8 of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act for consultation with legal counsel. I further move the discussion be limited to the building inspections department and to the acquisition right away for a rural addition project. Is there a second? Second. We move and second, Ms. Dallas. Ms. Glavis? Aye. Mr. Murray? Aye. Mr. Chairman? Aye. Mr. Fox? Aye. Mr. Sayer? Aye. Motion carries. This will be back until the turn and then come back. Again, I appreciate everybody.